Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. A viewer shared a very disturbing story with me which sounds very much like the Botham, Shem, John, Amber, Geiger case. The only difference is we are dealing with a woman, 28-year-old Tatiana Jefferson. Now what's so sad and tragic about the story is that the man who called the police, he called in a, a non-emergency number. He called them because he was checking on his neighbor, not because anything was happening or because um, there was strange noises. There was nothing going on according to his testimony, but it was just a wellness check. He wanted to make sure his neighbor was all right because he saw that the door was open. And so Again, there was no reports of anything out of the ordinary happening other than the door being open. So the police officer gets there and he claims to perceive a threat when he saw 28 year old Tatiana Jefferson simply moving around inside of the house, which is something you do if you're in, in your home, you have that right to move about in your house with not without worrying about if someone is looking through your window or your door and perceiving you as a threat when you're on the inside of your house. And so this young woman has lost her life. The neighbor feels awful about this because this is not the outcome he was looking for. This was a protect and serve call. This is why they called a non-emergency number. It was a protect and serve. What we as a people need to understand, and we have to continue to say this over and over as these stories unfold. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. There are demonic forces dealing with the minds of people that are causing them to make these moves that they're making towards our people. There is a spirit that is stirred up in, in the eyes or in the thoughts or the minds of these Gentiles who do these things because we never hear, it's very rare, I mean there are rare occasions, but for the most part we rarely hear that they will go into a white community where an officer has been called and they have their guns drawn and just ready to start blasting. I'm not saying that it's never happened because I have seen a few cases where I've questioned why there was such a use of force but for the most part the majority of the time that is reserved for our people the unfortunate thing about these stories as well is there's always these immediate reports of how to justify these actions officer goes in and says he finds a gun in which you have that right in the state of Texas, the good old state of Texas. There was nothing saying that the gun was drawn or pointed at him or anything. When you look at the dash cam, I'm sorry, the, what is that? The, um, <clears throat> whatever the, the cameras are that the um, officers use, um, it didn't indicate at all that he gave her any amount of time. It seems as though as soon as he yelled the command, he fired the shot. Not giving her any time at all to respond to what she was hearing, what was even going on. Who was this person? You can't give a person two seconds to respond to you when you have caught them off guard. Basically, he was the perceived threat. She had no time to respond to anything. And so, yet we have another case, just like the Botham Shem Jean. This young woman was a college, uh, either a college graduate or a student, and she has lost her life. It doesn't matter if she was a college student or not, but the, that point needs to be made sometimes so people can understand that you're not, everyone is not a thug that's out to get you, you see. But what we usually see in these cases, because even with the young man, Joshua, um, they immediately start to surface images and pictures and things of things that have taken place in his life as if this justifies what happened to him. 
even creating a story to connect him to, to say, nope, it's not who you all thought it was. Here are the suspects right here. So they are able to spin the stories in whatever direction they want, create the narrative, and we either take it or leave it. I mean, that's what we're dealing with here. Right away to put it out there that this woman or that there was a gun inside the house. In my opinion, once entering the house, if you didn't see any around her, on the floor, in her hand, or anything like that, why search the house? Because that is not why you shot. You didn't shoot because you saw something in her hand. But just in case they say that they did, because you know they can grab something and put it there, say they found it in her hand or near her body. We don't know what the, if they, I mean, basically they could say whatever they want at this point because I believe the only other person in the house was a child. That's what I'm hearing so far. Of course, other details come out. Um, one report says that she was babysitting. So, so far that's all that is known. Of course, details do come out later. But it's unfortunate when we can almost expect them to bring out details to build a case to tear down her character, demonize her, criminalize her, and she is the one who fell victim to the circumstances presented that day because this was just a wellness call, a wellness check, a check, and he was supposed to go there and protect and serve, but that is not what happened. And so they have set precedent after precedent, these people, of creating a narrative and flooding the news with images that they may have found of this young woman 10 years ago when she was in high school or something, or find any little mistake, oh, we found out that she got a ticket for jaywalking two years ago. Any little thing that they can to demonize her because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And their job is to do what? Paint the children of the kingdom as animals. They have a duty and that duty is being carried out. Their duty is in their flesh because of the perpetual hatred. They know when they go into a community if they are in one of their communities or one of ours, and they deal with us much differently than they deal with their own for the most part, you see. But it is time for us to understand. I don't wanna make the older gentleman feel any worse than he already does, but this is why we as a people have got to be careful about calling known enemies to come and see about us. I've said it, many others have said it, but we need in our communities, our own people to police us. And if there was another number to call instead of calling their number, what if we can call our own neighborhood watch, our own neighborhood watch? And I'm not talking about the neighborhood watch program or, um, thing that they have in place. But what if our own people formed our own network of individuals and groups that said, look, we are going to look after this community. If something goes down, we have a number to call where we don't have to call city officials, but we will call within our own network that we have created to ensure that nobody is going to be just simply gunned down for walking about in your house or in a house while black. Okay, family, I am very sure that more details will come, will come out on this. But again, it's time for us to be solution based because so much is happening. We've got to come up with other ways to deal with these things because sending our children to our enemies to be taught, calling our enemies for help, needing all of this kind of stuff is what we find that keeps us on here and in the news talking about things that they've done to us because we've called them or put our trust in them. They've already made it very clear that they're going to deal with us this way. 
because it's within them. There is a spirit on them that has been stirred up. And we've got to stop creating the situations to where we have to call them. We've got to do something different. We've got to police our own. We've got to stop depending on people who don't like us, who can't stand us, to protect us. I know it's easier said than done because there are some very crazy things happening in the black community. But again, it falls back on us that we've got to figure out how to police our own because calling them is not working. Let's stop creating these scenarios to where we need them. Meaning let's stop targeting one another. Let's stop with the B on B, black on black. Let's stop it, okay? So that there is no need for us to call them. And in this case, that wasn't even the case. In this particular call or instance, it was a wellness check that went very, very wrong. Let's change the narrative family. It is time to redirect. With that, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.